Lankin's mother abandoned him in, oh, 1947, a couple of years after he was born. His mother, I heard she was Dominican. I always figured his father was white, maybe even not Italian. Not that it mattered. Back then, if you look black, you black. Same as today, I suppose. He stayed at the orphanage until 1958. Well, when did you meet Lincoln Click? 1966. I was running black ops out of Laos on behalf of the CIA. He was loaned out to me via joint CIA DOD task force. He's a quiet boy. Good boy. Two Purple Hearts, the Bronze Star, and the Distinguished Service Cross. He served his country with honor and distinction. After the city closed the orphanage, he fell in with Sammy Robinson. Sammy ran the black mob over in Delray Hollow. I can't say I approve. But often colored boys didn't have a lot of options back then. Boys like Lincoln, the ones who've been abandoned, they're always looking for a home. Always looking for a place to belong. I think he thought he'd find it in the army. Thing is, once that's lost, Never get it back again. When he returned from the war, Lincoln ended back up over at Sammy's. Now Sammy owed the Italian mob a whole lot of money, and he needed Lincoln's help. It's a damn shame what happened. It breaks my heart. Still say this is the craziest goddamn thing I ever heard. Using real money to rob the feds. Well, hell, man, not like this is our cash. This all came from Skeletta. Besides, peanuts compared to what we're gonna haul out of there. Is everything we need to burn? Yeah, that's it. I grabbed the keys to the truck, then we can get the fuck out of here. Lincoln, pick up the keys. Still not sure about leaving him like this. He came through with the truck just like we asked. He increased his partner to make it look good. If you got doubts, why take the chance? We should get going. You got the keys so you can drive. Come on, let's get the hell out of here. Man, dump that motherfucker already. carry him around. We need to get. Come on, Link. We burning daylight.
Take it easy heading to town. We don't need the cops crawling up our asses. Ah, oh, that poor fuck back there. He ain't got no idea what he's in for. What was his cut? Five percent? They're about to not like he'll be able to spend it. Feds will be watching his every move for the rest of his life. Thought it'd be better we just whack him. If I learn anything in Nam, always a good idea to dangle someone out there. Use them to get everybody's attention, and you just slip away. So answer me this. What's the craziest thing you saw over there? You don't want to know. Hell, man, I'm a taxpayer. I got the right to know how my money's being spent. Oh, Georgie Marcano pays taxes. Damn right I do. That's how they got Al Capone, and I ain't going to prison for no fucking tax bill. Huh? Well, you gonna answer the question or what? We, uh... We on the coast of Quang Nai. Evacuating the civvies for Charlie overran everything. Anyway, we getting them onto a medical ship. This woman walks up. She got a baby in one hand and a leash to a pig in the other. She starts up the ramp, and the MP stops her and tells her, you can only bring one thing on board. So she tosses the baby into the water. MP goes to ape. Tells someone, dive in after the kid, starts screaming at the woman, wants to know what the fuck she's thinking. You know what she says to him? She says, I can always have another baby. Jesus fucking Christ. Hey, man, you ask. <laughs> yeah, but I thought you were going to tell me a story about some gook getting his dick blown off or something. I mean, God damn. It's not a fault. It's not like you think. The conditions over there, man. Jesus Christ. One day you're raising cattle, tending your rice. Next day everything bombed flat. You put people up against the wall, they will do anything. Guards at the reserve probably won't be too keen on you waltzing around with that piece of yours. I'll just leave it under the seat. Time to see if these forged IDs are worth a fuck. Back it up to the loading dock. Some of these fellas might get a little uh, rough with the language and... Well, ain't like I've never been called nigger before. I know, but I'm just saying, if I go along with it, ain't nothing personal. The only thing I care about is getting our hands on that money. I say something about being hot. That's when we make our move. All right. Where the hell you going, Lincoln? Now, here we go. Put your IDs up to the glass. We're part of the Boeing crew. What the fuck's this shit heel doing here? Affirmative action. You know how it is. Old country is spinning around the goddamn toilet. You can follow me. As for you, go on and grab those bags off the truck. You'll be carrying them to the burning room. How much y'all bring in? $238,546. Small bills, mostly. I'll let Miss Gale call up your office when we're done. She'll confirm the delivery. Appreciate it. You need to check that scatter gun. You packing anything? Still in training. Good. One less goddamn thing for me to worry about. You can pick it up on the way out. Buying room's down in the cellar. This way. 
Ain't seen y'all around these parts before. Y'all's over in Georgia for a while. He just got out of the service. But he moves downstairs. Been here for a year now. He's in the Navy for two tours, and the medal's falling out of his ass. <laughs> Government tells him thanks, but no thanks. That's a crock of shit if I ever heard one. Bad day when a guy fear a white man can't get a job. They no nigga with staggers in his hide on the spot. You bastards better not be playing with each other back there. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you! Christ, look at that. Didn't know y'all held that much gold. That uh, Washington's been shuffling around on account of the war. It's here, then it gets sent to Dallas, then it comes back. Uh, it doesn't make a lick of goddamn sense. Here we are. Those bags on the table there. Never done this detail before. Figured it'd be bigger. It gets the job done. Only time there's a problem is when the flu clogs up. Fuck. That's some heat right there. We used to use coal for it, but a year or so back we switched over to oil. Maintains a more consistent flame. Here's some guy come around the house trying to switch me over to oil. Told him I wasn't interested. I never was neither till I saw this. At least with oil, we don't get soot all over the goddamn place. Used to be we'd have a nigga come in with a hose, wash all the shit off the walls. Ellis should be coming up any time now. Uh, give me a second. <clears throat> All right, you take care of those guards. Keep your ass down. You don't want them getting a drop on us. I know what the fuck I'm doing. We've been written now. Called over there last night. Told them I wanted to sell it. Told them they need to be out in two weeks. And the man, his name's uh, John, starts laying into me, saying the lease gives them the right to a 30 day notice. That's how he's supposed to find a new place in two weeks. So I tell him none of that's my goddamn problem. It's my property, and I'll do with it what I please. And if it brings up that fucking lease again, I'll... huh? Finding cover. I'm pinned in! Come on, we need... Get this vault open!
Damn, we shall kick the hornet's nest this time. Only way we walk out of here is if we get the weapons stored in that armory. Bust the door open. I'll watch our asses. My old man gonna shit a brick when he hears about this. Fuck! Fuck! Come on, open! Give me that damn thing. Way worse than this over in Nam. Little smoke don't be shit. Stay close to the vault, watch for the drill. I'll deal with these assholes. Sammy had men all over the place. Now, one of them worked at a cleaner's and stole the uniforms Georgie Marcano and Lincoln Clay wore on the day of the robbery. Another one was a janitor at the Federal Reserve, and he provided a rough layout. The robbery of the Federal Reserve was timed perfectly, and none of it would have been possible without the involvement of Sammy Robinson, Lincoln Clay, and the rest of the black mob. You just come from Vietnam? That's right. I was a Marine in the Pacific. You can take it from me. Just because you're home doesn't mean you're back. You understand? People around here, they don't, they don't get it. Never will. <laughs> Keep your ass out of trouble. I'm late. Got caught up crossing the bridge. Don't worry about it. Excuse me, sir. I'm looking for my stepbrother, Lincoln Clay. You seen him? He used to get ticked off if you were even a minute late. Kiss my ass. <laughs> there he is. <laughs> <laughs> How was the trip? Being how this is the first time in four years and somebody telling me where to go, what to do, or how to do it, it was fucking great. <laughs> Hmm. What's new with the old man? Man, don't even get me started on Pops. He used to pull his head out of his ass. Same as ever then. Brother, you have no fucking idea. Damn, Ellis. She's looking good. <laughs> Just like I left her. Man, even I know not to fuck around with your cop. Hmm. All right, come on. I'm ready to go home. Hmm. <laughs> Sammy's doing all right. Ever since we got your telegram about coming home, we've been climbing the walls. What if the plane crashes? What if the train's delayed? What if they call him back? And he goes stand in front of the kitchen window and sip his whiskey like he was expecting you to come strolling up the sidewalk. Don't say nothing about me telling you that. I won't. It'll be fine once he sees you. Ever since we... 
Hey, man, be careful. Anyhow, like I was saying, he'll be fine once he sees you. Ever since Mama Hell, you know how he gets. Sure, fuck it, it's your car. Bash it up all you want. Empire Bay a year or so after you shipped out. Started selling weed. They call and ask me if I want something. I say, sure. It's free money as far as I'm concerned. Anyhow, a month back, Marty drops me a line and says they're moving into heroin, that they're looking for a partner down around these parts. Can't imagine Sammy was too keen on that. I never told him about the weed. That ain't nothing to nobody. But this, I gotta talk to him about. I ain't said more than three words, and he's yelling about the feds. How we don't need J. Edgar up our asses, and what the fuck am I thinking? Selling dope with kids running around the neighborhood. We ain't selling no dope to no children. <laughs> like they got any money to begin with. Fucking around the side. That was pretty serious shit. Knew a couple guys over in Nam who were running it. Wound up pissing off the wrong person. Got their throats cut. Shit, man, I know what's what. That's why I'm talking to Georgie about it. No way Sal's gonna go along with that. Georgia says he'd keep his old man from fighting out. We'll still clear the hollow with Frisco, just selling the French wall. Georgia's Uncle Lou won't say shit as long as we give him a taste of the action. I don't know, man. Georgia's a cool cat and all, but heroin ain't the kiddie pool. Come in on it with us. I bet he'd agree to a three-way split. <sighs> I don't know. I kind of need to lay low a bit, figure some things out. Yeah, all right. Not the big nigga who ate him. Well, shit, old man. I finally went somewhere they knew how to cook. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome home, son. How are you? I'll be better once I get some of that shine in me. I always did <laughs> love corn whiskey. I would like to make a toast. My father used to say that the real worth of a man came from the mark he left on the world. When Lincoln first told me he was joining the military, I was against it. Too dangerous, I say. Let those people fight their own war, I say. But then I realized Lincoln needed to go out and make his mark. And that's precisely what he did. I'm so... so proud of you. Paul Lincoln! Bienvenue à la maison! Paul Lincoln! Bienvenue à la maison! <laughs> so good. Oh. <laughs> nice seeing you, Lincoln. Oh, I kept you in my prayers. I really appreciate that, Father. <laughs> now, who wants to get shit faced? <laughs> Woo! It's hard to explain what it's like coming home from war. Elation, fear. Imagine being trapped in a dark room and there's no way out. And every fear, every nightmare you ever had is in that room with you. And there's no escape from any of it. And then, one day, a door opens, and you're free to go. 
just like that. The thing is, you made your peace with your terror and your fear of death. And now part of you is afraid to leave it behind. But what choice do you have? Every soldier has to walk through that door, one way or another. Man, that whiskey's going to in the morning. Hell, man, just sleep it off. The room's the same as you left it. I'm going to take the basement. <laughs> the basement? Why the fuck you want to crash down there? I'll see you in the morning. Man, that wall must have really fucked you up. We barely have two nickels to rub together. Now we're paying for all that food. Jesus Christ! Watch that mouth of yours. We wouldn't be in this mess if you would have listened to me. What mess? It's not something you need to worry about, Lincoln. I got it under control. Under control? God damn it, you need to. Boy, I'm not eyes. wanting you again. Have it your way, old man. Let him be. He needs to cool off. You mind telling me what's got him so riled up? We've been having uh, problems with the Haitians. But like I say, I got it under control. Well, trucks all loaded up. I figured we got enough out there for. Should I, should I come back? In honor of your returning to us safe and sound, I made a donation to Father James here. Supplied him with food he can hand out to some of our needier family. Well, I was hoping you'd lend me a hand, Lincoln, and give you a chance to see the neighborhood. This thing with the Haitians, how serious is it? Ah, you know Ellis. Someone looks at him the wrong way, he's on them like a wet dog. Like I said, I, I can now uh, come back. Nonsense. Lincoln needs to get out. Enjoy the day. Besides, be good for the two of you to spend some time together. Mm. Gone. Those people waiting on their food. Oh, I saw Langan a couple times once he was first back. <laughs> he told me he wanted to leave town, head out to California. Now, he had a friend in the service who could get him a job working at the Mare Island shipyard. And the only reason he came back was to tell Sammy and Ellis goodbye. But then he found out about the trouble Sammy was having with those Haitians. So he decided to stay and help. Those Haitians, they are bad news. No talking Lankin out of it. Whatever else he might have become, Lankin was always loyal. Most likely. Three month apprenticeship to start, then the union lets you in. You tell Sammy and Ellis? Not yet. I'm gonna wait a few days. Didn't want to spring it on them since I just got back. Well, they won't like to hear it, but they'll come around. 
You need to do what's best for you. Go ahead and start serving those folks. I'll be back. Give Sammy my best, Lincoln. Yes, sir. Warm meal, warm heart. Oh, sure. Sir. Thanks. Nice to see you. You delivering a real blessing here, Lincoln. Thank you. Blessings mine, ma'am. Couple of days back and they already got you working? Ah, I'm happy to do it. it. Means a hell of a lot to all of us. Don't get old, son. It's a fucking shit show. <laughs> I'll see what I can do about that. Hey there, Lincoln. How are you, Regine? I'm good. Nice to see you around the hollow again. Nice to see those big brown eyes again. Well, they'll be over at my aunt's place with the rest of me. You should stop by. Maybe I'll do that. Lincoln, we got trouble! Run, Regine! Because we're done with you, Lincoln! Sammy's next! Papa Doc Duvalier was elected president of Haiti in 1957. By 1959, he had created a secret police called Tonton Makut, and people started to flee. Uh, most of them settled in the southern United States. Now, mixed in with the good, hard-working people were hardened criminals. Uh, they formed the backbone of what became the Haitian gang. Now, Lincoln found out they set up in the swamps and were led by a man named Baca. Uh, you and Father James done already? We got jumped by the Haitians. It's time you level with me. Tell me what's really going on. Yes. I suppose it is. Six, uh, seven months ago, folks in the hollow started getting robbed. Money, jewelry, things of that nature. Didn't take long for us to figure out it was the Haitians. Then those batas on the law started going after the lottery. How much money are we talking about? How much? Enough that we're in deep You sure this is how you want to play this? Last thing they're gonna expect is an attack from the water. You head back round to the row. Stay with the car. I'll meet you over there when this is done. Hope you know what you're doing. Trust me, Ellis. Here in a bit, this will all be behind us. Legba, open the gate. 
Should have killed that old man a long time ago. I think the boss was worried Sammy didn't bomb Marcano. something.
Asshole. First I kill you, then I kill the used. Fuck you! Who won, Bata? Fuck you! You made a big mistake going after the Hollow. Come on! This is one more way easy, see? Come on! That's why it's all. Not on so to white now. The man you're talking about took me in where I had nowhere else to go. You are no better than you. 
In this boy a cocktail. Let them hit me now. They fucking get to. This is getting goddamn ridiculous. Until we find you, bro. Trouble, don't I? You old? I am. How'd it go with Baka? We came to an understanding. He stayed dead, not left. Let's get back to Sammy's. Can't even tell you how happy Pops is gonna be. And, damn, you're scratching the paint. I left my anyway, and this shit with the Haitians has been weighing on him. Put them out of the way, things will calm down. Go back to how they should be. Been telling him for months we needed to do something like this, but Pops, he... I don't know. Sometimes I think he's lost the taste for this shit. Just because a man don't rush to violence don't mean he lost something. I know, just makes me wonder what happens after, you know? No, I don't know. Explain it to me. No matter if it's a bullet or the hand of God, we all go sometime, right? I suppose. But Ellis, we don't need to talk, though. I pray that Pops outlives the both of us. But if he doesn't, every motherfucker in the hollow is going to be looking to us or gunning for us. Just saying we got to be ready when that day comes. Yeah, well, that's not something we got to worry about right now. So just cool it with your grand plans, all right? Yeah, all right.
Fang Lankin didn't understand, or maybe want to understand, is that for a man like Sammy, there's always going to be more Haitians. Now, if there wasn't someone going after Sammy, then there was someone else forcing him into a bad situation. It was never going to end. That's how Mankin ended up working for Sal Marcano. You were right about those Haitians being down by that old salt mine. They won't be bothering us again. It was a mistake sending you down there. I should handle my own business. This isn't any different than what I was doing before I left. You probably don't know this. But every night on the TV, right after the news, they show the names of all the boys killed. Native son, dear listener. Well, that was a month. Just hits the spot. You all out there know what I'm talking about. Yes, you do. Oh, and Nancy wanted me to remind y'all. That tasty patisserie is still filling orders for king cakes for the upcoming Mardi Gras festivities. They tell her what to you, and if you buy two, get one free. Can't beat that. So go on over there and tell her I sent you. Mm. I know, I know, I'm not supposed to enjoy my coffee on air. <laughs> oh, Gilbert's turning red, folks. <laughs> oh, I tell you, we like to have our fun, dear listen. And that's what Mardi Gras is going to be all about. Good old-fashioned New Bordeaux F.U.E. And if I sound a little enthusiastic, well, I'm sorry about it. But I am. I've talked before about being honored to be part of a crew of knights for the 10th year running. we got a heck of a float plan for y'all, and we have spared no expense in strutting our stuff. This will be my first crew since my dad died last year. Dear listener, you know how important Mardi Gras was to him. God rest his soul, he was one of the crew of Knights and Fighters. He was captain for more years than I can remember, and daddy was wrecked back in 1932, for those of you whose memories go all the way back then. Oh, you know, I tell you, he'd spend weeks, that months, preparing. Mm. More than anything else, it was the tradition, the feeling of being part of something, of this city that he loved so. My father believed that every man had his role to play, and every role contributed to the greater whole. Those Reds over in Russia, even the ones here at home, they try to sell that as equality. Mm -mm. No, sir. There's always gonna be a king. And each king has his day. Mm. I'll tell you, that coffee sure is fine. On the next episode, you better believe we're gonna talk about this here story that President Johnson is considering a deal with the Russians to scale back our nuclear program. We're going to have that and a lot more right here. Native Sun.
Help goes into the back. I'm, uh, I'm here to see Mr. Marcano. The name's Lincoln Clay. That a fact? I'll be goddamned. Mind your manners while you're in there, boy. Or there'll be hell to pay, you hear? Park over to the side. <laughs> <laughs> Lincoln Clay! Christ, man, get a look at you! I bet those fucking gooks shit themselves when they saw you coming. Been a long time, Georgie. Oh, no shit has been a long time. I think the last time I saw you was that night over in the French Ward, right before you shipped out. <laughs> Damn it, that wasn't a gas. Oh, I seem to remember me and Ellis running from the cops, uh, and Danny ending up in the drunk tank. Hell, man, I bailed him out. Besides, just worth it to knock the hell out of them cracker assholes. <laughs> Smoke? Sure. Oh, man. Sammy said Mr. Marcano wanted to see me. Mr. Marcano? Shit. Make him sound like a goddamn lawyer.